So back in the March, April timeframe, when I got my initial blood lead level test and made my initial video on lead exposure in firearms, my blood lead level measured at 18.3 micrograms per deciliter. I got it retested here again in August and my blood lead level went up to 19.5 micrograms per deciliter. So it actually went up by 1.2. To me, I'm a little disappointed that it went up, but really I'm not surprised by that because the bulk of my shooting for the year occurs in that time period from around March, April, moving into July, and then especially in July where I'm shooting the Ohio Triple Crown and the national matches, that's basically two weeks of waking up in the morning, shooting a match, drinking beer, and then shooting another match in the afternoon, going to sleep, waking up, doing it all over again for two weeks straight. In those circumstances with the tempo and the environment, the fast paced environment of those matches, it is easy for me to forego some of the precautions and maybe not be as good about hygiene after handling bullets and lead and brass cases and that sort of thing. So really I'm not surprised that my blood lead level increased after the national matches. Now, even in August, I did shoot a number of matches. I shot two monthly bullseye matches, and then I also shot a couple of indoor GSSF matches. One of those ranges had pretty poor ventilation, so that could probably also cause my blood lead level to go up, especially since I shot that match literally the day before I got my blood drawn. So yeah, my blood lead level went up. My babies are probably gonna come out looking like cone heads, but instead of being full on cone heads, they're gonna be like truncated cone heads. And I think in December, I have my next blood lead level test scheduled. So I think that'll be a better indication of whether or not my habits and precautions has affected my blood lead level. I've really cut down significantly on my shooting since August. I also have completely exhausted my supply of lead bullets. So now I'm shooting entirely powder coated bullets, which significantly reduces the amount of lead that's put into the air because it puts a physical barrier between the lead and the explosive gun charge, essentially, that's superheating the back of that lead, rather than you know just having that super thin layer of lube that gets burned off instantly. And the other thing is I was also contacted by a company called Parapet Components, and they wanted me to test some lead-free ammo that they ma manufacture, as well as some lead-free components that they manufacture. They make total metal jacket nine millimeter bullets. So essentially, instead of a regular full metal jacket where you have the nose that's copper, jacketed and then an exposed lead base. A total metal jacket is entirely encapsulated in copper or brass or whatever jacket material you're using. So that way, again, there's a physical barrier between the lead and the gunpowder charge that's superheating the back of that bullet. They also make lead-free primers. They also manufacture completed cartridges using their own components and normal brass. I don't know what powder they're using, but whatever it is, it's extremely clean burning. One thing I was surprised about was how clean the cases came out after shooting them. I mean, I collected them all up and not a single one really had any sort of gunpowder residue on the inside of the case. Not only that, they produced very little gun smoke when you shot them. It didn't hang in the air, it dissipated instantly what little smoke there was. So overall, an extremely clean burning round. Now, of course, for me, one of the things I'm most interested in when it comes to trying rounds out is going to be their accuracy potential. And this round seems to be fairly accurate at 25 yards. Now, I think the components are extremely high quality, and I don't think primers really have too much of an effect on the accuracy as, as a lot of people let on. Primers are primers are primers. We're talking about pistol stuff here going out to 25 and 50 yards. We're not talking about long range precision rifle stuff where if a bullet weight variance is two tenths of a grain that can actually change your point of impact significantly at a thousand yards or 1600 yards or something like that. We're talking about pistol here. And in that aspect, the primers they produce and the bullets they produce seem to be high quality or at least quality enough to produce accurate results. I think what really held back this round was the powder charge. They say this stuff is supposed to go 1050 FPS with a 124 grain bullet, which is pretty slow for a 124 grain bullet. I think this is made to be like a minimum power factor or something for the run and gun sport shooting people kind of guys. For me, I'm most concerned about accuracy. I don't really care about the recoil. And in my experience and also talking to the people that know a lot more about this stuff than I do, that have tested a lot of handguns and have ransom rests and have barrel fixtures and build extremely accurate, high quality handguns guns. Nine millimeter typically likes to be driven a little bit faster to produce 
good accuracy. You know, somewhere is around or above 1150, 1200 FPS for a 124 grain projectile to achieve its most accurate potential down at 25 and 50 yards. And that's pretty much what I found out when I tested these bullets. So the standard that I use for measuring essentially commercial grade off the shelf, nine millimeter round is 124 grain Swiss P. This is made by Ruag in Switzerland. You can see the test target on screen. It achieves very good accuracy. This was all shot out of a hand-built 9mm 1911 with target iron sights out at 25 yards. I shot a mix of supported and unsupported, sometimes slow fire, sometimes sustained fire. Overall, the hotter ammo that I tested, like the Swiss P 124 grain, which goes typically somewhere around 1150-1200 FPS out of that gun, produced better accuracy than the parapet ammunition going 1050 FPS. Not only that, I also tested the Winchester service grade, the plus P ammunition that was developed for and adopted after the modular handgun system trial. And in my experience, this has been an extremely accurate round and everything I've tested it out of. And in this test, it was also extremely accurate. When I tested the parapet components ammunition, both supported, unsupported, sustained, and slow fire, the group sizes were not nearly as good as the Swiss P124 grain and a little bit worse than the Winchester service grade plus P ammunition. Now I did talk to the representative at the company and talked about my findings and he said they have already received feedback that mirrors my results on this and that they're moving to increase the powder charge for their next run of commercially loaded ammunition. So it's gonna be moving a little bit faster in that 1150, 1200 FPS range I was talking about. And apparently that should produce better results. I would be very interested to get my hands on that new loading that they're offering and then accuracy testing it against this current loading. I'm sure it'll probably produce better results. And if it does produce results on par as the Swiss P 124 grain ammo that I currently use, I don't see a reason why I wouldn't use it in especially indoor matches and especially GSSF matches where I'm shooting primarily nine millimeter. In bullseye, I, I don't shoot a whole lot of nine millimeter anymore. I shoot mostly 45 and 22. However, if I do decide to shoot my nine millimeter gun for the center fire match or something like that, I would absolutely not hesitate to use this ammunition if it performed as well as the Swiss P 124 grain. Now they also showed me a report on a study they'd conducted on air quality using their ammunition. They had a shooter in an indoor range with sensors and tubes sucking air from various positions around the shooter, at the muzzle, behind the shooter, near the shooter's face, and then measuring the air quality samples. Essentially, according to this report, there was basically like no perceivable lead put into the atmosphere, put into the air when they tested this. So that's actually pretty significant because they also tested some other brands out there and the vast majority of them were really bad, pretty dirty. You can read the full report. I think I'll have a shareable version I can put down in the description or the pinned comment. You can read it yourself. I don't want to direct anyone's opinions in any sort of way. I also believe that they're working on making lead-free large pistol primers. And if they do, that'll make them the only producer of large pistol primers that are lead free. So if you're a bullseye shooter and you shoot a lot of 45, 45 is primarily a large pistol primer cartridge. Some companies out there make small pistol primer 45 ACP, but that stuff is evil. But if they do start making large pistol primers and they are not much more expensive or the same price as other primers out there, there's really no reason not to use it. And really, if you look at their loaded ammunition and their components, it is a fairly competitive price versus other things out there. So uh, yeah, I, I definitely see myself using more of this ammunition, especially for GSSF indoor league stuff. Anyways, yeah, that's pretty much the major developments as far as my blood lead level situation goes. I am powder coating bullets now. I'm not shooting nearly as much as I was from March, February, April, all the way into August. And I do have a source of lead-free components and bullets now, which is pretty cool. So, so I'll be interested to see where my blood lead level is at in December. As always, thank you all for watching. Thank you especially to my channel members and my Patreon supporters for supporting the channel directly. They make this whole thing possible. You can become a YouTube member or a Patreon supporter by clicking the relevant links below. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.